people mm -hmm. aren't familiar with Kashmir um, mm -hmm. here in the United States who are watching or listening now or who will read this. It, explain, put that struggle in context, where it is and why it's happening. Well, Kashmir was, uh, uh, at the time of independence in 1947, Kashmir was one, Jammu and Kashmir was one of the independent princely kingdoms, one of the 500 and something princely kingdoms who were all required to decide whether they wanted to be with India or Pakistan. And, and uh, Kashmir, of course, uh, had a majority Muslim population, but a Hindu king. And it's called the unfinished business of Pakistan because, you know, initially the king didn't decide while, while partition and bloodshed was happening. Also in Jammu, uh, which is which is part of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, and then eventually he he um, he uh, fled to India and signed a secession based on the fact that there would be a referendum, that, which there never was, and so it's it's as I said called the unfinished business of Pakistan, but I mean of partition, but uh, so India and Pakistan have been fighting over it and it's become a toxic situation, a flashpoint. Uh, the Indian Muslim population is of course held hostage to all the debates between India and Pakistan in Kashmir and we're talking about two nuclear powers. So you're talking about a place with 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 uh, proliferating with graveyards in the 90s the struggle turned militant the army was fighting militants now the population has turned militant recently the army general said that he wished the people who were throwing stones were actually firing at them so he could do what he liked with them uh, just last month they tied a kashmiri civilian to a tank used him as a human shield and uh, the officer who did that was was rewarded, was honored, and many people in India applauded it. And that's by no means the worst thing that has happened there. Well, uh, Kashmir uh, and Kashmiri is just one uh, of the languages, I mean, in the literal sense, that uh, uh, appear uh, in this uh, novel. You also cite a number of Urdu literary and poetic traditions and sources in the book, uh, lyrics, poetry, songs. And what do you think um, the importance is to all of these references, uh, Muslim, Dalit, Kashmiri, uh, at a time when India's image uh, often is projected as much more uh, homogenous. So, the, the, I mean, I have written about this in non-fiction a lot, but right now what we are seeing is a very, very dangerous moment in India because since 1925, the forces, the organizations that, uh, I mean, mostly an organization called the RSS, to which Modi belongs, to which many prime ministers and ministers belong, and which is really the cultural guild that controls the political party, the BJP, has always said that it wants India to be declared a Hindu nation, just as Pakistan is known as an Islamic Republic. But India's constitution calls it a secular socialist republic. Uh, so, right now, the, the people in power are almost in a position to be able to change the constitution. History is being rewritten, school textbooks are being rewritten. People who believe that India should be a Hindu nation are being placed in all the institutions of democracy in positions of power. And uh, as you know, every day you're hearing stories about lynchings, about killings, about vigilante groups. So, so you have minority populations, and by minority, I'm still talking about millions of people, being forced to live in terror, being pushed to the bottom of the food chain, being unrepresented in the media, unrepresented in the judiciary, unrepresented in the bureaucracy, unrepresented in any way, you know, the moment of the big uh, Dalit parties like the BSP led by Mayawati or Lalu or Mulan Singh Yadav, which seemed to be bringing some sort of representation, have also been pushed out. And a hu the idea is and always has been to create this constituency called the Hindu constituency. And now the difficulty is that uh, 
if you're, if you're going to celebrate the idea of the Hindu nation, you're turning what is pain into pleasure. When, when things like the demonetization happen, when jobs are being lost, when people are being displaced, and you're told you're doing this for the Hindu nation. So all your pain is being turned into some kind of yearning, like some kind of religious sacrifice, and all your anger is being directed downward to the most vulnerable communities. And so uh, it's a psychological muddle, you know, which analysis and numbers and figures and facts uh, don't seem to help, you know.